War is coming. We need heroes like you. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. So I've gotten a bunch of questions about Captain Marvel's powers. How do they work? How powerful is she? How powerful is she compared to the other Avengers characters and the other movies that we've seen so far like Thor and Thor Ragnarok? Gladiator Hulk, so we'll do a breakdown of that. The Marvel Future Fight people gave me some video that shows off her powers a little bit better than what you get from the Captain Marvel movie trailer, so I'll play that in a second. Many thanks to the Netmarble people for sponsoring this video too. It's always fun to talk about people's powers. If you are new to my channel, I do Marvel videos every week. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. But there's a couple of different power levels that she goes through during the Captain Marvel movie. So careful for spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie yet, we'll be talking about very specific things. But here's like a brief clip that shows off most of her powers that you see during the movie. That's actually from the new Marvel Future Fight Captain Marvel update. So if you're a big fan of that game or you want to download that, I'll put a link in the description. But they gave you some new skins. It's Ronin, this young Nick Fury. You get Min Erba and her new Star Force costume and obviously Captain Marvel. But just starting at the beginning of when Captain Marvel gets her powers, then going through the movie in a linear fashion, because technically the movie itself isn't linear in the way that they reveal what her backstory is. So just to make it simple, we'll start with when she gets her powers in the accident and go from there. She starts out flying the experimental jet with Marvell, Wendy Lawson. They get shot down by Jude Law's Yon Rog character who's coming for Marvell and her research to get the faster than light engine. Before that happens, Carol Danvers is just a totally normal 100% human pilot who then blows up the Tesseract engine, which explodes all the energy infuses her. However, Marvell leached energy from the Tesseract. I assume it's a very Captain America first Avengers scenario where Red Skull was basically just leeching energy out of the Tesseract and just putting it into weapons, using it like power cells. So I assume it's a similar situation with this faster than light engine. So the Tesseract energy is like the fuel. When it explodes, Carol's body absorbs all that infinity stone energy, which is why she's crackling with photonic energy and Jan Rog like hey wait a minute and he hatches his plan to take her is a very similar situation to Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver getting their powers from the Mind Gem. Right around when Infinity War was hitting theaters, Marvel did a really cool thing. They just kind of clarified what was going on with Scarlet Witch's powers and where they came from because technically she's a mutant from the X-Men comics, but she's also a part of the Avengers and the MCU. But around Infinity War, Marvel was saying that the Mind Stone only enhanced what was already there, sort of unlocked latent abilities that she already had. So it's pretty clear that they were basically saying that she's a mutant, but we can't use that term so we're going to call her enhanced and that is what carol danvers is in the mcu she's an enhanced person but at the moment she absorbs all that tesseract energy and it modifies her body she has a hundred percent potential for every power and special ability she's ever going to have without wearing an infinity gauntlet or holding an actual infinity stone Yes, there's always ways to take people to 110 or 120% of their base power levels, but just at 100% regular power levels, Captain Marvel already has all those abilities the minute she gets her powers. So she's knocked unconscious, and this is when the Kree and the Supreme Intelligence make her part Kree. Like, we all wondered if she was going to be, you know, half Kree or if her mother was going to secretly be a Kree person. The way they're explaining it during the Captain Marvel movie is that she's a normal human, she's got all this Tesseract energy, Yon Rog and the Supreme Intelligence want the consolation prize. If they can't have the faster than light engine, they want the weapon that absorbed all that crazy infinity stone energy. So what they do to exploit her is that they gaslight the hell out of her to keep her thinking that she's Kree. They swap her human blood with Yon Rog's Kree blood. He even says during the movie, she has my blood flowing through her veins so that she'll bleed green blood and she'll think that she's Kree. And when you scan her, she'll biologically read as a Kree. But then very important, they give her that special chip that dampens her powers and they lie telling her that they're giving her her powers, her dual iron fist photon style. But they tell her that the chip is the way that they're giving her those powers. This is a gift that we're giving to you. And they keep repeating that dialogue. What is given can be taken away. And the Supreme Intelligence tries to completely block her powers before she shorts it out and rips it off. When she's wearing the chip early in the movie and the Supreme Intelligence isn't totally messing with her, she just has a somewhat enhanced strength, durability, like a really badass soldier and fairly powerful photonic blast from her fist. 
But that's it. Those are her abilities. When she gets rid of the dampener and they have that scene of her standing up slowly with photonic energy rippling all around her, there's a really important thing that happens on Marvel's ship that you all probably noticed in the theater, but maybe you didn't think too much about at the time. Remember when she's standing up, starts glowing brighter and brighter. You see the lights dim all over the ship. The force fields go down a little bit. The energy handcuffs, the other energy-based weapons and rifles the creator holding start to short out a little bit. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. Captain Marvel is absorbing all that energy to power herself up to binary level. So when Nick Fury says, you know you're glowing right, that's her like right below binary level. Like she's right at the line there. She doesn't really go full binary until she stops all those missiles when she's going back up to stop Ronin's attack. So she absorbs a lot of the energy from one of those missiles, throws one of them back into the others, then blows those up. She continues into outer space, blows up Ronin's smaller ships by blasting them, then flies through the bigger ships like a hot knife through butter. That's full power Captain Marvel at binary level. That's also when she's powerful enough to be in the vacuum of space without a helmet. Like you see her just sitting there floating around like Superman. The really important thing the movie did not do though is they didn't take the time to actually explain how that works. Like it just wanted to show you a really cool action scene. There's other characters that actually ask her about it. Like what's going on here? She's like, I'll explain how it works later. The really important way they balance her character out to keep her from just completely side railing the story by being way too powerful is that she can only stay at that binary level so long as she continues to absorb more energy. The reason why this scene of her going binary goes on for so long is because these smaller ships of Ronins that she's blowing up are also blasting her with their energy weapons. She's absorbing that. It continues to make her more and more powerful. So like she has her own version of the Captain America, I could do this all day moment where she pounds her fists in that comic book pose when she's standing in front of Ronan in front of his ship there. If you really got down to it, she could only do that all day if she just continued to absorb energy. It's the same thing with a lot of the other Avengers too, except for the Hulk. The way the Hulk's power works is kind of an inverse of the way that Captain Marvel and Thor work because they can get tired like normal people if they expend enough energy. The Hulk kind of goes in reverse of that. He just keeps getting madder and madder, stronger and stronger. She also uses her photonic energy to fly. I think based on just what they presented in the movie because she falls for a little while until she sort of figures it out is that she needs to at least have a minimum amount of energy in order to achieve flight. Like if her reserves are drained too low, she might be stuck huffing it around like everyone else. But at base level, she still has greatly enhanced strength and durability. So just like Thor, she could take a punch or two from the Hulk. But a really great comparison to make to Captain Marvel in the Captain Marvel movie and Thor in Thor Ragnarok is that they both have like their base levels. Then when Thor is crackling with energy fighting on the Rainbow Bridge, that's sort of like his version of Super Saiyan and Captain Marvel has her own version of Super Saiyan, they can only maintain that for a certain amount of time until they just wear down or use too much energy. But the difference with Thor is that you can wear him down just like a normal person if you keep him fighting long enough. It just takes way, way longer because he's super, super strong. But unlike Captain Marvel, he doesn't run out of energy. He can just keep calling lightning as much as he wants, but his physical body will just wear down until the point where he can't fight anymore. It's not like he could run out of lightning, whereas Captain Marvel most definitely can run out of photonic energy. But even when she's running on fumes, she's still super powerful, super durable. So hopefully that explains on a story level how they're handling her character, especially at the end of the movie, because I saw so many questions about, you know, what's going to happen with her stories in the future if she's so powerful? What possible threat could there be for someone like that so you just have to remember that she's not always that powerful but if you have any other big questions about the mechanics of everything or what was going on during the captain marvel movie just leave questions in the comments below i'll be doing more avengers endgame videos soon many thanks to the marvel future fight people click here for my captain marvel post credit scene video and click here for all my captain marvel movie easter eggs thank you so much for watching everybody stay awesome i'll see you guys tonight